Hello, and welcome back to section 1.7, uh, where we discussed an introduction to polynomials. We defined a few terms. Now we're going to look at degrees of polynomials. Here we have a series of monomials, a term we defined in the previous video. Uh, to determine the degree of a polynomial, we look at the power of the variables, or the power sum of the variables, where we add them all together. And we'll see one example of that. So to determine the degree, we just look at the power and say, well, there's only one variable here. Its power is 3. This indicates its degree. This would be a third degree monomial, or a third degree polynomial if there were more terms and they were less than this 3. If we look at this monomial here, we have an r. Well, this is our variable because we don't know what r is. It's just holding the place of a number. What is its power? Well, if we don't have a power written on a variable, we have to assume there is at least one of them. So its power is 1. The exponent here would be 1. So this is a first degree polynomial. This here is just a constant. It's just a number. I could put any variable in here and raise it to no power, a power of 0. And anything to the 0 power uh, is 1. When you explore your rules of exponents, you'll learn a little bit more about that. But since I don't see a variable here, I have to assume it is of degree 0, or the 0th degree. And I know that's kind of an interesting concept and maybe troubling at times. But if there is no variable and it's just a constant, it would be degree 0, because we don't see a variable. This one here, this is a little tougher, because we have more than one variable. It's still a monomial. It's a, uh, a single term of a product here. We have 3 times x squared times y times z, the multiplication by adjacency. If we look at this, to determine its degree, we have to sum up all the powers of the variables. So I have a power of 2. Here I don't see a power, so I assume 1. I have to have at least one of them for y to exist here. And I have 1z, so its power is 1. Oh. And if I sum these, I have the degree of this monomial. So 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. So 2, 3, 4. The degree of this polynomial, or in this case a monomial, is 4. Um, when it comes to polynomials that are not just monomials, maybe they're binomials or trinomials or just general polynomials that have many terms, we would like to have a little bit of standard, and that's writing them in descending order. If I were to group these in descending order, let's just do this as practice. I like, by descending order, I mean we like to have them in the order of highest power to lowest power, or highest degree to lowest degree. Well, if we look at these three here, we, or four, we already determined that this has the highest degree, because four is greater than any of the others. So I would write this first. So the next one would be, well, what's the less number? 3 would be next. And that was this term here, 4y cubed. And the next one would be this, which is 1. We only had 1r. And then we had the constant. So what I've done is I've written these in descending order. When it comes to polynomials and we can rearrange terms, we want to write them in a descending order. So let's look at this example here. I have 5x squared minus 3x squared y plus 2x squared y z. So we have many variables. They have different powers. So the first thing I'm going to do is assess the degree of each of these terms, just like we did with the monomial, even though this is a trinomial, because we have three terms that are separated by addition or subtraction. So if I look at this, it is of degree 2. And I'm going to write 2 degrees. And that's a little symbol we use for degrees. I look at this one. I say, well, we have two x's and one y. That's a total of three. So this would be a third degree monomial. And this last term here is x squared, one y, one z. So it is a fourth degree. Well, we like to have them in descending order. I want the highest degree first, then the next, and then the lowest. So if this is my highest degree, I'm going to write it first, 2x squared yz. 
The next one is this. This is my third degree, so I'm going to write this one. This uh, addition or subtraction belongs to that number. So that negative has to come with that 3. So that's my third degree. And then my second degree, this is a positive 5x squared. All right, and we can see that this is now in descending order. Now that it's in descending order, I can determine the degree of the entire polynomial. And that's simply looking at what was the highest degree. If you put it in uh, descending order, the easiest way to do it is look at the first term. The degree of this is 4. This is a fourth degree polynomial. Fourth degree polynomial. Now, a common mistake is to add up all of the powers. Do not do that. It is just the degree of the highest or leading term if you write it in descending order. So this, the highest degree was 4 for any of the single terms. Here we have fourth degree polynomial. That's the degree of the polynomial. Let's look at some polynomial functions. And don't worry too much about that terminology of functions. That'll be introduced uh, a little later. But let's say we have this value. So this p just means some polynomial is equal to 6x squared minus 4x plus 5. We only have one kind of variable, and that's an x. But because the powers are different, they're different terms. So I have three terms. We call that a trinomial. Of these three terms, which one has the highest degree? So we have to determine their degrees. This one is degree 2. So I'll write here second degree. This is, oh, it has a power of 1, so it's a first degree. And this doesn't have a variable, so we'll call it the 0 degree. What is the highest? Well, this is the highest of my degrees, so that determines the degree of the polynomial. This is a second degree polynomial. What about this here? Well, we, if we recall, two terms is defined as a binomial. I have to look at this and say, well, this is first degree, and this is the 0 degree, which of these two is higher? Obviously this. So this is a first degree polynomial, specifically a binomial trinomial. What if we were asked to evaluate a polynomial? Well, <clears throat> we discussed and defined evaluating before. If we have a variable and we're asked to evaluate it for a given value, that just means take this number and plug it in. I like to call it the plug and chug. So I'm going to take 2, and wherever I see an x, I'm going to put this value in. So if x equals 2, let's evaluate both of these. So if I put a 2 into here, I'm going to have 6. And I use parentheses whenever I replace a value. When I'm evaluating, I use parentheses just to help me uh, keep track of everything. And I recommend it. So instead of an x being here, I'm replacing that with a 2. Instead of an x being here, I'm replacing that with a 2. And now I can use order of operations and simplify. We can square this. 2 squared is 4, so I'd have 6 times 4. And I kept those parentheses to indicate this is multiplication. So I don't confuse it and think maybe it's the number 64. So that's why it's very important to introduce these parentheses. Minus 4 times 2. Well, before I do that, We've got to follow that order of operations. I did exponents first. Now I can do any multiplication or division. There isn't any division. So I can do multiplication. 6 times 4 is 24. 4 times 2 is 8. And this negative sign has to come along with. It belongs to that number. And then I have plus 5. So now that I've evaluated this using order of operations, uh, multiplication is done. Now I can do any addition or subtraction. And I do that left to right. 24 minus 8 is 16. 16 plus 5 is 21. So I evaluated this polynomial for x equal to 2, and I got the value 21. All right, let's also evaluate this one here for the value 2. And this one's a little easier because it's only a binomial, so it only has two terms. So I'm going to say 4 times some x plus 5, and I'm going to replace that x for 2 because it says x is 2. Now I can use order of operation multiplication before addition. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. So we've evaluated it. All right, I have a couple of examples for you to try. First, identify this, this term here. Uh, what is its degree? 
Uh, and is it a monomial, binomial, trinomial? Always think about these things before you actually do any evaluation. It may help down the road. But then I want you to evaluate it for x equals 6. And then look at this polynomial. Determine the degree of the terms. What is the degree of the polynomial? Uh, what kind of polynomial is it? And then evaluate it for x equals 2 in this example. So this has been 1.7. Thank you for watching.